Today on our 2014 Dodge Durango, we're gonna take a look at and also show you how to install the Takancha Prodigy P2. This is a proportional trailer brake controller that works for one up to four axles. Part number is 90885. To aid in installation, we're gonna use the Takancha plug-in wiring adapter, part number 3045-P. Now the Prodigy P2 is a proportional brake controller. That's great, it's kind of the newer style of brake controller. It's actually gonna use a sensor inside of it to detect how much braking force we're using in our vehicle. So in those emergency stop situations where we really have to get on our brake and stop our vehicle quickly, it senses that and it's gonna send maximum power back very quickly for you to help keep everything under control. Now on the flip side of that, if we're in more of a stop and go kind of situation or if we're just gradually coming to a stop at a stop sign, it's going to send back minimum braking power just to help us get stopped and get decelerated. The P2 has some nice built-in safeguards. We've got battery rundown protection, so the, LED, the small LED light's gonna be the only thing that we'll see on. It has very minimal draw on our battery. It's not gonna be something that we have to worry about. The P2 is gonna protect against short circuits to protect the brake controller itself and also the wiring on our trailer. And something that I like is it prolonged stops. It's going to reduce the amount of braking power going to the trailer so we're not gonna to have to worry about overheating it. You got a nice dial control located here on the left side. It allows us to adjust our gain. The gain's the amount of power, the amount of output going back to the trailer. You can see, you can easily bring that down. We can get it set wherever we want to match up with our trailer. For lighter trailers on flat terrain, we're gonna use a lower setting. As the trailers get heavier and heavier, or if the roads have some hills in them and stuff, then we'll adjust that up the other direction. And that's gonna allow for a little more braking power going back there so we can keep it under control. Now we have built-in boost levels. Boost with no number beside it means we're not using any boost. Boost is the quickness and aggressiveness in which our brakes are gonna be applied. So if we go into boost one, that's gonna be for your heavier tandem axle trailers. As we go into boost two mode, then we're really getting into those very large tandem axle trailers. And I don't think with the Durango you're ever gonna get into a situation where you'll need the boost level three. But if you do have a very heavy trailer, that can get those brakes applied quickly and pretty aggressively for you. Now in boost mode, there's gonna be a little LED light on that bottom right-hand side of the screen that indicates to you that you are in a boost mode. The C indicates that we have our trailer connected and the little LED to the left of that is gonna indicate that we've got 12 volt power. Now if our trailer were to become disconnected, it's gonna show us on the screen. So if we have any problems as we head down the road, we'll be notified of it and we can make our corrections. Look just like that. Now the first step in our installation is going to find the plug underneath the dashboard that matches our 3045P. As you can see, this is gonna have a plug that'll go right into the connection on the brake controller. It's gonna come right from our factory connector, which this will plug into. To find that, we need to look kind of up here behind the emergency brake pedal. Some vehicles are gonna have a felt panel down here. You can kind of see it here. We're gonna get this pulled down and out of the way. We've got two push fasteners. We've got one located right here. If we come over, there'll be another one right here in this area. Now to remove these, I'm gonna use a trim panel tool. You could also use a screwdriver. You just wanna get in behind the head of it there. And just pull down, you see there? I'm gonna pull that down and out of the way. May have a little plug here for the light. Just take that off. We'll set this aside for now. But if you look right back there, that's going to be our plug. The zip tie kind of holding it in place there. So let's trim that so we can get it angled up here so we can work with it. Now on the back side of that plug, or right above where that plug was located, that's our brake pedal arm. 
we don't want to get anything back behind there so we're going to run our plug our brake controller is going to be going over here on the right side of the steering wheel so we know we want our plug over in this location so i'm going to run this up over a few of the braces that are up here on the dashboard that way it'll have plenty of support got a few things we can zip tie to off of up here that floor vent will be a good area to use there and now back on this side we're just going to plug in our two connectors like that and then i'm going to bring it up and we can zip tie it off right to this wire loop Now we'll bring out as much as we need here of our pigtail to make our connection with our brake controller. And then we can zip tie it off right underneath here is the vent for the floor heat or for the, the heat that hits your feet. So I'm gonna go right around that using a pretty good length zip tie. Once we have that where we can get to it, you can see we can pull out some be able to bring a little bit back just depending on how our connection needs to be but we'll want that to come out there and then we can put the panel back in that we removed earlier all right that should work out real well for us now we're going to be mounting our bracket right here you'll see there's a little bit of wiggle space there so what we're going to do is just place a small washer right in behind it I want to use the provided self-tapping screws and we can use a quarter inch bit driver. Decide where we want it. And we'll just get those started. All right, now it'll give us a good solid mounting location. All right, now we'll just fit our brake controller into the bracket. We can see the holes on each side. We just want to line those up with whatever holes we choose in the bracket. We'll just want to keep in mind there is a dial on top of the P2 that we'll want to get to. And also on this side, a little blue button there, that's for your boost control. So you want to make sure you've got the room you need to get your fingers in there and control that. It looks like the lower one here on the front is going to do the job for us. I'm going to use the machine style screws and I have those finer threads on them on each side. Now we'll just use a Phillips bit. This is a little tight on this side, so we're using a right angle driver to get that installed. Bring our pigtail and plug that right into the back of the controller. Clicked in there. Now the C is going to indicate to us that we have a trailer connected. We've got our tester on the back there. And you'll see as we use our manual override, we can see the amount of power that's being sent out. Now with everything working as it should, that completes the installation of the Deconcha Prodigy P2 trailer brake controller, part number 90885. Also using the plug-in wiring adapter, part number 3045-P, both on our 2014 Dodge Durango. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.